morning guys it is 8 49 a.m on this saturday morning goose and i just got back from our morning walk and it's a tad humid today if you can't tell by this weird poofy wavy thing that's happening with my hair today i want to go through my meal planning process with you guys this is something i normally do on sundays but we're gonna do it on saturday today because we've been traveling a lot the past month and so our whole schedule is out of whack and we have no food to eat today so gotta change that unless you want to see me get hangry and i can tell you right now you don't also david is out of town this weekend normally we switch off every other week picking meals i'll pick the meals then he'll pick the meals i'll pick you get it and then we'll go to the grocery store and stuff together but he is gone this weekend at his brother's bachelor party so i'm gonna handle it all so anyway it's kind of a rough outline of what we're gonna go through a meal planning syllabus if you will no i take that back i don't want this to be associated with school scratch syllabus from the record but okay so the way i meal plan i'll pick out two recipes one dinner recipe one lunch recipe from my Notion recipe catalog. Now what we usually do is we will make those meals on Sunday night, sometimes Monday night, this week it's Saturday night, and then we'll eat leftovers all throughout the week because I do not like cooking during the week nor does David. And we both have no problem with eating the same thing four days in a row. Are we boring? Maybe. Are we practical? Absolutely. I know some people like to eat something different every night. I have friends who go grocery shopping multiple times a week. That's amazing. Love that for them can't do it. All right, so basically this is meal planning for lazy people, or at least lazy cooks. Literally lazy cooks, because my last name is Cook. It could not be more appropriate. I'm not lazy in other parts of life, though. It's very specific to cooking. Anyways, I'm gonna get showered, then I'm gonna pick out my recipes, and then we're gonna get going with the day. All right, here is the outfit. So ignore anything weird going on on the walls behind me. I'm literally in the middle of painting my room. David went away for three days and I was literally like, this is a great time to redo the entire room by myself. I don't know why I'm like this. Anyways, this top is thrifted and the shorts. I got them both on Depop. The shorts are originally from Princess Polly and the label says PP denim. And so David calls them my PP pants. Now that's all I think about whenever I wear them. The top I think is originally LA Hearts which I think they sell at PacSun. I really like it though because I think this color looks good on me, but also it's like a nice summer top, but then it could also be a fall top. Like you could put it with a nice pair of jeans on one of those days in October where it's weirdly 75 degrees. You know, like I don't want to dress like it's summer. I want to dress like it's fall, but if I dress like it's fall, I'm going to sweat. You won't sweat in this and you'll look very autumnal. Anyways, and this bag is from Higher Goods. And then these shoes, I have no idea where they're from. I've had them forever. They're my ride or dies, my tried and trues, or just like my sandals, whatever you want to call them. Okay, so I'm gonna pick out my recipe now. We've had quite a bit of pasta lately, so I don't want to do a pasta recipe. I think I'm gonna go with these chickpea fajitas. And then for lunch, I'm gonna do these Mediterranean quesadillas because we still have a bunch of really big burrito tortillas left that I want to use up. And then I think I'm going to go to the farmer's market to see what ingredients they have there. And then whatever I can't find there, I'll go get at the grocery store. Both the grocery store and the farmer's market are within walking distance for me. So it's nice that I don't have to drive. Now I'd love to also say that my grocery trips are zero waste, but they are definitely not. Like whenever I post anything about grocery shopping or cooking, there's always a couple people who are like, Oh, but all the plastic. Uh. The packaging is only one part of sustainability when it comes to food. Also the type of food you're eating, which I've personally focused on trying to eat a lot more plant-based meals the past couple of years. And I've been trying to find plant-based recipes that I really like and look forward to eating. And food waste is another piece to think about. So I'm always focused on buying just what I need and not making too much. And then if we do have any scraps, making sure that I'm putting those in our compost bin. And I just think those are two pieces of food sustainability that I have more control over than the packaging. So I choose to not stress myself out about finding package-free food all the time, especially when there are emissions related so heavily to the two other pieces that I am choosing to focus on and that I can't control. I think it's generally known at this point that the less meat you eat, the better it is for the environment. There was an article in Scientific American that stated that if every person in just the U.S. cut their meat consumption by 25%, that it would reduce annual greenhouse gas emissions by one percent which doesn't sound like a lot but i'm pretty sure that's equal to like several million metric tons so 
it would have a big impact. That's not even giving up meat entirely. So that's why I think paying more attention to the type of food you're eating, trying to eat more plant-based foods is overall going to have a larger impact than trying to find all plastic-free packaging. And then as far as food waste goes, the EPA estimates that food waste is responsible for as much as 8% of greenhouse gas emissions. That's why I choose to focus on keeping as much food waste as I can out of the landfills. And then I just think the other thing to know, like I said, farmer's market and grocery store both within walking distance for me. So sure, I could drive around and try to find all of my groceries at zero waste stores or bulk stores, but I would be driving all around doing that. And I think the emissions would kind of just cancel out. And so while at the grocery store, I'll always try to choose the package free option if there is one. It's just not something I'm gonna bend over backwards to do. So if you find yourself stressing out about grocery store packaging, let this be your permission to let yourself just chill out about it. Anyways, I sat down to pick out a recipe and went on that tangent. I'm gonna make chickpea fajitas, Mediterranean quesadillas, and we're gonna go to the farmer's market right now and see what they have. All right, we are back and I'm gonna go through what I got. First, I'm gonna take this off of my body and these out of my ears and this off my head. So at the farmer's market, I bought myself some flowers. They are wrapped in plastic and they put a plastic bag around the bottom, which is kind of a bummer. But I haven't brought myself flowers in probably like two months and lilies are one of my favorites. So tree show so. I got some green onions that look very healthy. Zucchini, red onion, and a yellow pepper. The fajitas I'm making call for red and yellow, but they only had yellow. So one out of two ain't bad. I wanted to get some strawberries there because I've been wanting to make strawberry jam ever since I learned that it literally only takes like three ingredients. And just having like some homemade jam on a little biscuit sounded so nice and wholesome. But I think I just missed strawberry season because like nobody had any. And I guess maybe I could have gotten blueberries, but is blueberry jam a thing? Probably. Anyways, at the grocery store, a couple apples, some feta cheese for our quesadillas, some bananas, red pepper, a whole bunch of corn tortillas for our fajitas, avocado, a second red pepper, some lettuce, big old pan of chickpeas, sour cream because I really like sour cream on my fajitas and then I got some Ben and Jerry's dairy-free ice cream because I've been craving ice cream all week because it's been like 90 degrees out and so going along with my flowers I decided to treat myself. I didn't really buy any snacks this week because we got a bunch of snacks at Costco the last time we went so we still have a bunch. We do a Costco trip about once every month every month and a half to get some of the things that we like to buy in bulk. I also didn't get almond milk, which I usually get because we actually got a big jug last time, which we've never done before. We usually get like the little cartons, but they were out, so we get the jug. Anyways, it's probably a little bit smaller than my normal weekly haul. And I'm actually not super confident that it's gonna last us the whole week since we're doing this on Saturday, not Sunday. But David won't be home until tomorrow, so he won't be eating it until Saturday. I don't know, we'll see. I'm gonna go ahead and get this all put away. And then I will meet you back here later tonight when it's time to make dinner. Okay, it is 5.51 p.m. and I have made a huge mistake. I have waited until I am ravenously hungry to start cooking. So I'm gonna be snacking and cooking at the same time. I think this is a new flavor of Sun Chips. Monterey Jack and Garden Tomato. It tastes like a more mature version of the Harvest Cheddar. Like if Harvest Cheddar went back to school, got a master's degree, and like found meditation, that's what this is. But so the reason I waited so long to start cooking because I wanted to finish painting my room. And I was like, I have to finish it before I start cooking because I do not want to paint later tonight. And so I did it, it's done. And it looks so good. I did spend about three to four hours picking out the perfect paint color. And I'm not gonna lie, I was worried it was gonna end in disaster, but it didn't, it ended in a miracle. I need my iPad, Goosey, where is it? So I'm not gonna show it to you right now because my room is still a disaster but I'm sure I'll put it on my Instagram or my TikTok, so go there if you want to see it. Anyways, let's start cooking these chickpea fajitas. And your goose is smooch. What a good boy. What a good sous chef. So as I mentioned before, all of my recipes are in my Notion dashboard. And I know what you're thinking. Morgan, isn't that a lot of work to copy and paste recipes from the internet into your own dashboard? And the answer is yes. You know what is also a lot of work? 
scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling through blog posts just to get to the recipe you need. And then try to remember if you usually double it or not. So that's why I really like keeping it in here. You can easily see all the ingredients, what I need, any notes I have, and the instructions minus the blog post. And don't get me wrong, I respect the blog post. I know it needs to be done for SEO, but I need to put it in Notion for TKMS, keep Morgan sane. Also because I'm filming this later than I intended, the light's probably gonna change. I might have to get out my big light. If things look different, like it's just cause the sun is naturally orbiting the earth. Nope, earth is orbiting the sun. It's been a long day. So first thing I'm gonna do is get the peppers and the onion all chopped up. And also I need to tell you about everything that happened between the last time we talked and now. Also, please don't judge me for how I cut things. For some reason, I'm very self-conscious about it because I'm not sure of the proper knives to use or the proper technique. I have just been chaos chopping things my whole life. And it wasn't until I did it on the internet that I realized that maybe sometimes I'm doing it wrong and then maybe people judge me for it. But you know what? I've gone this long and I haven't chopped off a finger. Knock on wood. And I make delicious food. Good enough food. Anyways, the other thing that happened today. So this afternoon, I was gonna go to the thrift store because I wanted to see if I could find some new wall art for my newly painted bedroom. But Goose was sitting on the couch and he was looking so sad. And I was like, oh, it's such a nice day out. Maybe I can just go to the thrift store tomorrow. Goose, let's go to the park. I'll bring my blanket and a book. We'll have a nice Goose and mom afternoon. So I take him outside and immediate foreshadowing. I just heard buzzing. Ah! Oh. Chopping these peppers when I'm just supposed to be slicing them. This is why I don't multitask. Anyways, I heard buzzing. There were just a bunch of bees in the park. I guess there were flowers growing in the park now, so maybe that's why. But I only saw like two, and I was like, eh, that's fine. You know, they'll move. They get it. So we went into our little corner by the tree, and we were playing, and Goose was kind of actually being a turd. He wouldn't stop eating grass. And so I actually threatened to take him back in, because I was like, Goose, you cannot eat grass. You're going to barf it up, and I don't want to clean that today or ever. But I gave him another chance, threw the ball one more time for him, and then he came back kind of limping. I First I thought he just ripped one of his nails because he's done that before. But this was like a different limb. Like I went over to look at it and his leg literally pushed me away like a reflex and that never happened before. And I was like, oh no, this little turd got himself stung by a bee. So we come inside and I start Googling what to do when your dog gets stung by a bee. It's telling me to look out for signs of an allergic reaction, which includes heavy panting and excessive lip licking. And he was panting really heavily and he was licking his lips. But also we just came in from an 80 degree day. The dude was just hot. And then I like iced his foot. I couldn't find the stinger, so I couldn't pull it out. But he wouldn't stop panting. And I was just getting so nervous because I don't have a car. David has a car and David's gone. Also, I don't drive. Have a license, haven't used it in several years. And so I was like, oh my God, my dog is gonna die because I can't get over my driving anxiety. At this point, it had been about 30 to 45 minutes since he was stung. Again, it's just my assumption. I don't really know. And his gums were still pink. He was still panting, but he wasn't looking like he was about to keel over. But I was crying at this point because I was so nervous. And so then I called David and David was calm and cool as a cucumber because he always is in emergency situations. And that's why he's the yin to my yang. There's actually several reasons for that but that's one of them. Anyways, he told me to give him some Benadryl just in case, so he did that. He got sleepy and I was like, is he sleepy because of the Benadryl or is he sleepy because he can't breathe anymore? I'm pretty sure the end of the story is that he was just sleepy because of the Benadryl because he's laying right here and he seems fine. However, the dozens of articles that I read on the internet said that symptoms can come up even a day later, so you have to keep a close eye on them. So I've been checking on him every five minutes, which was really fun to do in between my chaos painting. So that was my day and now we're here and I'll stop boring you with my life stories and give you a nice little fun montage of me making this meal. How's that sound? Good, great, amazing. Roll it! That might've been weird, but it felt right. Laying down on the job. Sir, you're supposed to be helping in the kitchen. Oh, you can't help because you don't have opposable thumbs? That's fair. Good boy. These are really good. 
I've only made them once before, and I'm definitely going to start making them more often because they are incredibly easy and very delicious. I don't even miss the fact that there's no meat in them. But yeah, I'll probably make the quesadillas tomorrow. Lunch, I do usually make every day, but I still make the same thing every day. It's just like super easy. All you do is chop up some of the stuff and then it cooks for like five minutes. And yeah, that's how I meal plan for the week. So thank you for hanging out with me as I did this today. You basically served as my David replacement. I hope you had a good time and that maybe you learned a few helpful hints. And there's a helicopter coming and I hope that the audio isn't picking it up. And there's also now people in the park that I think might be listening to me do this and it's making me very self-conscious. So it's time for me to eat my food in silence and I'll see you in the next video.